diving into our main topic today which are the e-invoice workshop so basically this is a workshop that teach you how to use auto count to issue your e-invoice is not the invoice seminar we will not provide those uh, information on the invoice not not providing like we will briefly provide only we will not go too deep into those theory okay mainly is on auto count how to handle e invoice so the training outline the first topic will be teaching you on how to set up your my invoice portal and inside auto count what we need to do to set up our e-invoice module and then create the team number for our customer and also our item what do we need to set up first in our item and then how to issue standard e-invoice consolidated e invoice self build e invoice and also how the post system handle the e invoice okay so if you have any questions you can always type into the chat box to let us know okay so the first part is how do we set up our my invoice portal so as you all know my invoice portal is the portal that you can retrieve every data you can do every setting on your my invoice uh, on your e-invoice so what we need to do in my invoice portal is we assign the role we need to assign someone as the director of the company in order to access the my invoice portal and then we need to assign we need to register the intermediary and erp so these two is to assign auto count as the intermediary to help your company to submit e invoice so we need to do these three things inside our my invoice portal okay so the following session i will be swapping from the slides and the live demo so maybe we'll have some delay lah. okay so the first thing is we need to log in into our okay i co co continue as slide first we need to log in our my invoice portal so how to log in my invoice portal we will need to log into our my tax.hustle.government.my this website this website is the website that you uh, use to submit your personal tax every year it's the same website you just log into using your own ic number and your password okay and then the first thing if you haven't created you haven't retrieved your team number you can through this e data to get your own team number so every one of you even you are individual you are company you have one team number your individual you have a team number starting with ig if you are partnership starting with d if you are syndrome Baha, starting with c so every one of you you need to get your team number from this e data here in order for you to uh, do the next step okay so after that when you log in mine this one is the uh testing website lah, so might have some difference with yours and then after you have logged in you will have see this page okay telling you that okay is the name individual my team number okay and then so the first thing that we need to do is to assign the role so assign the role is we need to assign someone as the director of the company but this only applies to sandirian bahat if you are sole proprietor you are enterprise you are partnership we don't need to assign the director you directly use your own team number to go into your company's my invoice portal you only need to assign director when your company is a sandiram bahat a bahat okay so when after we log in into here we click on this icon the profile icon here and then we come to role application so after we came into this role application we need to select new application type of role we select director of the company and then under this team number here we type in our company's team number so when you type in the team number of your company it will show your company's detail make sure it is correct and upload a supporting document that 
proves you you are a director of this company okay so upload the documents and then tick on the checkbox and then we click submit so after you click submit after you click submit you will need to type your password again and then click on the signature to continue the application okay so after you have typed in your password then it will show you this message that you successfully assign yourself as a director of the company okay so after you have assigned yourself as the director of the company if you need to assign someone else to assess your my invoice portal we will assign them as representative only because one company only allows one person as director the rest will need to assign as representative so we will be telling you how to assign representative at the end line. okay so later will be demo okay so after you have assigned yourself as director then you can come back to the home page here click on the my invoice to enter the my invoice portal so what like what i've mentioned we directly go into our my invoice portal through our my text profile here okay so you directly click my invoice yours will not not be showing this preport this one is for testing so you directly click on your website is click on this my invoice okay so after you have clicked into my invoice the first time that you log in into my invoice you will have been seeing all of these uh words okay all of this dialog window so you need to fill in all your information fill in all your information your name your ic your uh, sst registration number your email your address all the things okay so what we encourage is we fill in all the things again because sometimes even though you see there are something here but sometimes it was not recognized so you just fill in all the things again okay and don't leave those uh column empty you just put an a if you doesn't have anything for example you don't have sst you click you put an a you don't have tourism tax you put an a okay and remember the telephone number you need to use mobile phones you cannot use your landline number must be the 012 blah 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 okay in order for you to save because if not you will not be able to save okay so after that we click next so this is the uh page for you to confirm everything the email that you want to receive the notification and then your preferred language then we click save so after you have clicked save then it will tell you that or oh, your my invoice portal has registered successfully okay then we just click finish setup then the lhdn will send an email to you telling you that your company's my invoice portal has been successfully set up okay and then your com your role will also be showing inside your my invoice portal there okay so for the second part we will be telling you on how to add intermediary okay so after you have came into here you can see you can retrieve those uh my invoice related q and a those uh, faq informations inside here okay you can also through user guide here to view those e invoice template e invoice uh, information okay so under here we click on our profile here click on this view taxpayer profile okay so this is where we do the setting this is where we do the setting to add intermediary to add those erp so all of this information if you need to change you can still edit here okay after you edit you just click save Okay, so add intermediary, we come to the bottom, click on this intermediary. 
click on this add intermediary enter the team number of the auto account the business registration number the name then enter the phrase then we click search okay it is because i have already registered this team number as intermediary so if you have not registered yet you will have you will be going to the next page so the next page will like this okay so when you click continue you can click on this representation from when until when so normally we put the date in future lah. so you don't need to do every year and then remember to give all the access right to submit document to view document to cancel document every of this access right and then we click on this add intermediary so this is for you to assign auto account to help you submit your document if you didn't didn't did not give this access right when you submit document in auto account, you will have error. So you need to give all this access right. Okay. So after that, the intermediary will be showing under here. The next thing would be add ERP. So this ERP is also for you to, uh, for the my invoice portal to recognize your company so we need to assign erp fill in the name you just give maybe the name auto account accounting 2.2 and then a client secret expiration we put until three years okay then we click register Okay, just put a name auto account system 2.2 .2, put three years then we click register okay then it will be showing you all these client id client secret key remember to call to copy this client id and client secret key to your notepad or to your word file and then save it for future use okay this is how auto count and how my invoice portal recognize this is you so do not show this do not share or show this client id or client secret key to your friends to your customer to anyone okay because if someone gets this client id client secret key from you they can use their they can help you to submit your e invoice on their site okay so don't share this client id or client secret key to your customer to anyone Okay, because we need to input this client ID and client secret key inside auto account for auto account to know that oh, this account book needs to link to this my invoice portal okay so please don't share your client ID and client secret key to your to anyone okay so so far do you have any questions If you have any questions, you can uh, just directly type me to the chat box, yeah? Okay, so now we'll be going to the next part on how to add representative. So like I've earlier mentioned, uh, mentioned earlier, one company only allows one director and the rest, if you need to let them to access your my invoice portal, we will need to add representative. So how to add representative? We come back to our my tax portal here, and then I can only show you through the slide lah because I'm not director of any company, so I can't show. Yes, the first time login only director can do. Okay, because after you have assigned someone as director of the company, then the director log into my invoice portal to do the setting. Okay, so add representative. I can only show you through this slide because I'm not director of any company. I cannot, uh, I can't show you inside my 
on text border lah. Okay, so how do you add in representative? We come into my text border here. If the director have few company, they can access both because okay, I let you see ah. Uh, if your director has a few company, when you access my text portal here, they will be able to choose the company. Because mine is director representative. If the director, they are director of the company, it will be showing director only. And then all the companies that he is director will be showing down here. So they just choose which company they are doing. Here we show all the companies information. So even though they have 10 companies, here it has 10. Doesn't matter. Okay, so the director switch to the company's profile. And then under the profile here, they need to click on this appointment of representative and then enter the IC number of the person, for example, my IC, and then click submit. Meaning, this one is the one who I want to appoint, and then I click submit. And also, type in again your password and then click on this signature. Then the person would be able to access your my invoice portal. Okay, so after they have uh, successfully registered the person as the director representative, they will be able to see individual is their own, and under here they can see what company they are, the representative of that company. Okay. So if you want to access the company's my invoice portal, we just change the profile at here first. Then we click on this report again, the my invoice portal again. So no limit, no limit on the representative. You can assign 10%, 20% as the representative of the company. Okay, so under my invoice portal here, Yes, you still need to appoint if the person cannot access your company's My Invoice Portal. Okay, if they can't see themselves assigned a point as the director representative, then you need to appoint them again. Okay, so under My Invoice Portal here, if you see that here is still your own individual My Invoice Portal, we need to come here to switch taxpayer. Select the company's one and then click switch. So make sure that this is your company's my invoice portal, then you go to do the setting. So make sure that you are accessing the correct profile, the correct taxpayer profile. If not correct, come here to switch taxpayer and then select the one that you want to do. Okay, so this is how we add representative and also switch taxpayer inside my invoice portal. Okay, so so far these are topic one. Cannot. Okay, so only auto count 2.2. Only auto count 2.2 is e-invoice capable. So you, you need to upgrade your auto count to 2.2. But if you want to do all these settings first in my invoice portal, also can because my invoice portal is individual. Okay, you can do it on the my invoice portal first. Then after you upgrade your auto account, then we directly do the e invoice setup in auto account. Any more questions?
Okay, if no question, we will be moving forward to the second topic, which is teaching you how to uh, set up invoice module inside auto account. Okay, so we log into our auto account. As mentioned, we need to upgrade our auto account to 2.2. Okay, to version 2.2 in order for us to use e invoice. So, if any one of you you haven't upgraded your auto account to 2.2, you can contact our office. Or if you are phase 3, then maybe you can do next year. If, but you are phase 2, it's better for you to arrange the upgrade within these uh, few weeks. Lah. Okay, because you need to do some preparation, you need to do some uh, setting on e invoice also. Okay, so for auto count, auto count part, part two, you can refer to your slide page 32. So we need to enable our e invoice module. It's just an information, every one of you, if you want to use e invoice on your account book, you will need to purchase for the e invoice module. If you upgraded your auto account since last year August or you new purchase since last year August, the first account book will be free and then the subsequent account book is around 80, 800 to 1000 per account book and it's one off. You need to purchase the module, you need to purchase the mod invoice module on your license. Okay, so first thing we come to tools option here. Under country and tax, e invoice. So we enable, tick on this, enable e invoice. And then put our start that, put our e invoice start that. If you are 1st of January 2025, then you put 1st of January 2025 here. Okay. And then if this, when you take allowed to create consolidate e invoice, meaning because some of the industry that are not allowed to create consolidated e invoice. So, for example, those uh, construction company, those uh, hardware shop that are selling construction materials, they are not allowed to create consolidated e invoice. So, you need to untick this to make sure that every of your invoice created is a standard e invoice. So, this is depends on your own. By your own, you need to make sure that. You take this is your company industry is allowed to create consolidated e invoice, okay? And also this interim relaxation period until so this mainly is because our government has given a six month interim relaxation period, but normally we don't encourage customer to use this relaxation period lah because within these six months if you do anything wrongly, it will not penalty you. So within these six months, you just submit everything like usual. Submit standard e invoice, submit everything. Okay? Don't rely on the interim relaxation period. If not, after the relaxation period, when you really want to start to use the standard e invoice, if you've done something wrong, then you will need to pay. You need to pay the penalty. You need to pay the fine. Okay? So this interim relaxation period, normally we put the same debt as our start that and then the button down here is update e invoice item called stock list so this list is to update the msic code classification code uom and also country code according to irbm latest list so you just click on this list to update all the code into your system because the government has been changing all the rules all the information all the terms uh, almost maybe every week every day so it's impossible for us to upgrade every time the when the government has a new update so if they update the msic code the classification code you just click on this update e invoice code list to get the latest code list from government website okay so basically this is how we enable e invoice Okay. 
So the next thing at page 30, slide 35, is to set up our company profile. So under general maintenance, our company profile, the first thing that we encourage our customer to do is to assign logo and report header to put in your company's TIN number and MSIC code. Okay, inside your report header here. Okay. And then the next thing under e-invoice, slide 36, under e-invoice here, you need to assign your company's TIN number. Okay, we need to assign our company's TIN number under here. And then this button, share company tax information, means if you click on this button, every auto account user would be able to retrieve your data from AIP website. So AutoCount doesn't does not directly submit the e-invoice to my invoice portal. It will through an AutoCount server. We call it AIP server. So AIP server stores all the data, for example, all the TIN number, all your invoice, all your documents, all the e-invoice related information. Then it submits to my invoice portal. So if you share this company tax information, meaning you are sharing your company's profile to the AIP server to let every auto account user can access your information. So they can directly retrieve your team number from the AIP server. You no need to share to, to them again. You just let them know. Um, I already share my information. You can directly get from AIP server. Okay. And then once we click this team number, if you are first time, you click add new. So we fill in all the information here. Business, team number, starting C and then 11 digit, your registration number, your MSIC code, every description, everything in the star here is compulsory field. You need to fill in. Okay, then we click save. If you are individual, you select individual. Put in your personal T number, identity type, my card, put in your IC number, and then all the fields also. Okay, after that, under the here, under the T number here, you can select your company's T number. Okay, you can select your company's T number, and then when you click OK, if you want to start using the invoice, you must make sure the AIP company ID here, it has a unique number. Okay, it has the unique number here. If no, you need to contact us. Because normally after you assign your team number, when you click OK, it will auto assign the AIP company ID. Okay. So when you click OK, it will assign. And then for the my invoice portal here, the client ID and client secret key is the one that we do earlier. Okay, is the one we do earlier in our ERP that I ask you to copy your company's client ID and client secret key. You copy and paste it into here, either secret key one or secret key two. Okay, you just copy and paste into here and then you click OK to save. So after you have saved, meaning, okay, after you have saved, meaning that this account book has already bundle with your my invoice portal this my invoice portal so meaning when you submit e invoice things will be going into this my invoice uh, profile okay so you see here is blank is because we need to protect you after you key in the first time the client id and client secret key after it has successfully validated it will not show anything here again okay it will be blank but everything that you submit will still go into the uh, my invoice portal, your profile there. Okay, so we click OK. So this is mainly the setting that you need to do when you access, when you use AutoCount to do e invoice. Okay, so far you have any questions?
Okay. If no questions, we will be going into topic three. Okay, topic three is on how to maintain our TIN profile inside the account. So TIN number, we need to we need to have a concept. TIN number is different. TIN profile, okay, not TIN number. TIN profile is different with our debtor profile. Each debtor, you need to have one debtor profile. Under here is your debtor profile. <coughs> Under here is your TIN profile. So it's two different things, okay? So every of your debtor, you need to assign them a team profile. You need to create a team profile and then assign this team profile back to your debtor there, okay? So after you have enabled your e-invoice module, under tax here, it has a tax entity maintenance. So we have three methods to create the team number. So the first method is to create manually, like mentioned earlier. You click new, so it's the same page here. You fill in all the information. So one more additional information is that for individual, if those individual that doesn't know their T number, you can leave this T number, the column here blank. Then you can leave this column blank. And then you type in directly the identity type and the IC number only. And all the information down here okay if they have it's better for you to fill in if no you can just directly use your ic number okay this is the first method so the second method is like i've mentioned we have aip server so each of our adapter we click edit you can see here we have a get team from aip server so when we click on this icon it will open this window for you then you click search so after you click search if something came out means this company they have shared their company information in aip server so you can search directly inside here you don't need to get again from them okay so for example, now I change account enterprise. When I click search, no result found means this company, they never share their company information in AIP server. So you need your customer, if they have already shared their information, you don't need to get from them again. Okay. And if now your company, your customer's company that you want to request your information from them, we can click on this request company tax information. Click this copy requested link. Then we you send the link to your customer. Then when they click into the link, they just fill in all their information inside the website here. Okay, fill in all the information inside the website here. Then the checkbox here is to whether they want to share their company information with all auto account user okay if this person they are not using auto account they can still share their information with all auto account user they just tick on this checkbox okay so that in future if they have a, any other uh, company want to find this company they can directly search in aip server they don't need to get again from them Okay, so this get team from AIP server, if you successfully get it, click this update current tax entity. So it will update the information of that team profile. Okay, it will directly get the information from the website there. Okay, so this is the second method. You need to assign one by one by get team from AIP server. Okay, and then the third method is batch retrieve team. So if you have 1,000, you have 10,000 customer, it's impossible for you to get team number, assign team number for them one by one. Okay, we can click on this.
okay so if you want to batch retrieve team we click on this find search on the adapter that you want to uh batch get tin from okay check all and click on this batch get tin click yes so if you can see we only have two uh adapter here is because the others we already we have filter here we exclude record with link and also exclude record that has already assigned text entity okay so only these two we haven't created the link for them to update their team number okay so these two click on this generate request link and send Okay, so this link will be directly sending to your customer email. Okay, so the email, they need, you need to maintain their email inside this email address column under their, each of their profile first. So that when we click batch get in, this link will be sending to their email directly. Okay, and then after maybe one day, maybe one week, you want to check whether all these customer that I send the link has there uh, fill in the information already. We come back to here again, check all. So nothing here. We untick this exclude record with link. Okay. And then click this retrieve and update text entity. Okay to retrieve the data that they have filled in inside the website into our text entity. So you can see here, the customer haven't filled their company text information, so it's failed to retrieve. Okay, it's failed to retrieve. If your customer already filled in the information, then you can directly retrieve and update that information to our team profile there. Okay, so in order for you to use this, we need to do email setting. You need to do setting on your Gmail. You need to do setting on the auto account also. Okay. So this is the second way. The third way is to import the team number by using Excel. So for example, if you need it, we have QR code at the back, you can scan on the QR code to download the uh, this Excel template. Okay, so fill in the T number. If you are a business, is a company, you don't need to fill in the identity number and identity type. Okay, you leave these two column blank. Text category is either private or government. Not government, then all goes into private individual or non-individual also fill in the business registration number if you have gst you have sst registration number and also the msic code so the msic code you can get from here okay you can get from here or you ask them to fill in and then the most important thing is the debtor and creditor code this tin number you want to link to which debtor card you need to point here you need to appoint here if not after you import this text entity it is only a team profile you still need to assign the team profile to the debtor one by one so if you have assigned the debtor card or creditor card here then it will automatic assign the team into this debtor profile debtor card okay and also fill in all the things Country card, city card, stat card, you can get from here. Okay, country card, city card, and tech, uh, stat card. Okay, you can get from here. And then, when you want to import, we select the header and also the detail together. Come back to auto count under file import from excel import text entity click this pass from clipboard okay 
in order for you to import your hex entity into the system. So you just do everything inside the Excel, copy and paste into AutoCAD. So this is how you create team number. We have three ways, create manually, get team from AIP server and also import by Excel. Okay, so end of topic three, you have any questions? If you have any questions, if no, we can proceed to chapter 4. Okay. So now we proceed to chapter 4. Chapter 4 is on how do we set up the item for e-invoice purpose. So if you are using item, under your each of your items here, you need to, we need to, we have three things that we need to do is to assign classification code to a point whether this item must generate e invoice or not, and also assign the e invoice measurement to this item. Okay, so the first thing, the classification code is the most important thing, is a compulsory field inside e invoice. So you need to assign the classification code of the item, whether it falls under which category. Okay, whether it falls under which category, you assign here. If you doesn't find any of the category that your items falls into, we assign it as others. Okay, this is the first thing, classification card. So you must assign everything to your, to a classification card. Because if your item doesn't have classification card, you will not be able to save your invoice. The next thing is must generate invoice. So for example, your company, you sell uh, many things, okay? Many vari variation of your things. So some of it must generate invoice. Some of it you can generate consolidate invoice. So you need to determine here. To let your staff, so your staff no need to choose whether this item, this invoice, they need to generate e invoice or not. Okay. So for example, this item is a cement. Cement is a construction material. So it is not allowed to create gener consolidate e invoice. So you tick on this must generate e invoice this checkbox. So wherever you create invoice which incurs this item, it will ask you to submit as a standard e invoice. You will not be able to save the invoice without key number or without any e invoice rel related information. Okay. So for those items, for example, you are selling sundry goods, you can generate consolidated invoice. So you can untick this column. So it's up to you whether you want to tick on these columns or not. So in slide 57, we also provide some of the info that some of the industry that is not allowed to create the consolidated invoice. For example, you are selling cars, selling luxurious goods, selling uh, etiquette construction, construction materials, betting, and also payment to agent. You are not allowed to create consolidate. Okay, so this checkbox is up to you whether you want to tick or you want you not do not want to tick. So the last thing is under others here, the e invoice measurement. So this is like the UOM. Okay, so this is the UOM of your item, whether it's kilo, is a uh, gram, is centimeter, is a uh, stock, anything. Lah. Okay, 
So it's around thousands here. You need to appoint, you need to assign correctly the UOM. But this e invoice measurement is not a compulsory field yet. You can leave it blank if you doesn't know, but it's better for you to fill in. Okay, you can fill in EA. If you doesn't know the measurement for your item, you can fill in as each. But if you know, it's better for you to fill in according to your to its particular URM. Okay. So one more thing is an additional information. For example, you have 1000 items and then you want to set the classification short classification code together in one go. We have a function, we have a features, we call it easy item. So under the find button here, this thing you can do in a group. For example, we have construction materials, we have sundry goods, we have a beverage, we have food. So for example, now I want to do for construction materials. I can search by item group and then do by one group at in one group. Okay, so check all if this all all these things are assigning in one classification code you can check all if not you need to select one by one okay and then we click on the easy item inside here select all click on this range set range set means you want to set all the details with the same uh detail okay select all the details click on the classification select others click apply meaning i am applying the classification code 022 to all the item code that i selected here then i click save in one go okay so you no need to assign one by one so this we encourage to do by by group lah. For example, you have a um, you have breastfeeding equipment. You do one go. You have childcare fees. You do one go. You have computer, smartphone, tablet. You do one go. So you don't do everything in one. Okay, you divide it by group. Okay, do it by group. Okay, so at the slide 61, we also provide you the uh, QR code to assess HDM website for those classification code, measurement code, and etc. Okay, you can get the latest information from the government website. Okay, so up until now, end of chapter 4, you have any questions you want to ask, you can raise up, you can unmute yourself also.